Hi there, it's Brad Flynn here. Today we're going to look at our final video in our series of financial mastery to understand how all the financial statements hang together. So just quickly covering off the statements and what they all mean before we get started. Profit and loss is about generally the promises made in your business. It's a snapshot of how you performed. It's about the past. We generally look at the profit and loss at the end of a period to see how we played. It's not necessarily about cash flow, as you're going to see as we go through this. Profit and loss is about the past. Secondly is our balance sheet. Our balance sheet is a snapshot of right now of the health of our business. How are we sitting with regard to the different elements of our business right now? And finally, the statement of cash flow is a summary of how the money flowed in a given period of time up to now or up to whatever point you assign. So if you're using accounting software, you can generally set windows to see how the cash flowed in that particular period of time. So let's go through it nice and slow. Now this is not meant to be a definitive um, example. It can get very complicated, so I want to keep it as simple as possible just to give you an overview of how all this hangs together. If you want to get really detailed, I'm going to give you a list of financial uh, books at the end of this that you can go on and read, or even better still, talk to your accountant and get them to explain it to you. Okay, so let's have a look at the profit and loss statement. For this particular business, we recorded an income of 20 grand, and some of that may not be cash, a lot of it's probably going to be purchase orders as you'll see. We had cost of goods of 8,000, leaving us a gross profit of 20 minus 8 of 12. We had fixed expenses, our cost to run the business of 6, and that left us with a profit of $6,000. At this particular snapshot with the business, we're looking at for our balance sheet, we've got 10 grand in the bank, we're owed 15,000, we've got 10 grand in inventory, we've got plant worth 100,000. So that makes up the assets of our business. Our liabilities, credit card debt of 8,000, we've got accounts payable, money we owe people of 2,000, and we've got, that should be a $50,000 in loans. And then our equity is basically our assets minus our liabilities to give us our current equity. And then our statement of cash at this particular time shows we've had income so far of sales of $5,000, we've had cash go out on $1,000 in advertising, and in wages $3,000. Nine operating expenses, property plant and equipment, we bought some computer gear for $1,000, and our summary which will become clear at the end of the video. So let's start to go through the month. So this is the snapshot at the end of the month, so what we're going to do is go back to the start of the month, and watch what happens to our balance sheet and our statement of cash flow as we go through. So we're going to kind of ignore this a bit at the moment. So let's say as we're going through, our income, we're logging our sales. So this would actually be varying as we're looking at through the month, but we're going to leave it out at the moment. So we've got 10 grand in the bank. And at this particular day, so far we've received $5,000 in sales that have come in. Maybe people have paid cash for it. Not sure, maybe they've paid their account. But we're still going to have 15 grand outstanding if we look at the end of the month. All right? So let's say someone pays $5,000 off their bill. What happens to the figures? So somebody ordered something, they gave us uh, an order for it, and we've given them an invoice, and now they've come time to settle it. So what's going to happen? Let's say they're going to pay us $5,000. We're going to see that. Accounts receivable will go down by 5,000, so it will go to 10,000, and our cash, because the money has come in, will go up to 15,000, and our sales will go from 5,000 to 10,000. Okay, so the promise was made here, then they paid for it here, and the cash moved here, and it turned up over here on our statement of cash flow for when it actually flowed. All right, so let's look at another example here. Let's say uh, we've got some inventory. So we've recorded a cost of goods of $8,000, and we've got inventory of $10,000. So what would happen in that instance is at the end of the month, if we didn't buy any more inventory, then our inventory level would go down to $2,000 as $8,000 went into the cost of goods to manufacture this particular thing. What about for our fixed expenses then? Let's say we've got some bills, of course, and let's say we are going to pay $1,000 off our advertising bill and we've got our $3,000 in wages. 
what's going to happen here is so they'll be logged in here under your fixed expenses. Let's say we do the advertising part first. So over here, advertising will won't be there when we start, but it will be once the bill has been paid. So there'll be a thousand dollars there. Our cash will go down by a thousand dollars, so it will go to fourteen thousand dollars. And what about our wages? So by the end of the month, initially that wouldn't be there. So we pay our wages bill. So our three thousand dollars goes out, and our cash does then go down by three to eleven thousand dollars. And our accounts payable that was would have been one and three. That would have been four. Will now go down to zero. If that was the case. Finally, we get to our statement of cash flow by the end of the month. So let's say we had, so far, 10,000 has come in in sales. We've still got 10,000 outstanding. We paid out 1,000 on advertising and 3,000 on wages. So it'll be 10 minus four would give us six. Now let's say we paid out $1,000 on property, plant and equipment. As I said, the way that would have influenced the cash statement, uh, the balance sheet is a cash would have went down by 1,000 but our plant and equipment would have went up by 1000 So the money went from there to there. It's a non-operating expense. So the cash would have been 10000 minus 1000 minus 3000 and minus 1 is going to give us a movement of $5,000. So at the close, our balance will be $15,000 in cash. So Hopefully that's helped you see a little bit about how the cash flows through your business. As I said, it's not meant to be a definitive thing, but it's hopefully going to give you a bit of an idea on what's happening within your financial statements in the background, because of course your software does all of this automatically. Hope it's been valuable. If you want to give me uh, an email or a call, my information will be at the back of the video. And uh, all the best with your financial mastery.